Hey everyone, we're going to go through the features and benefits of our alpaca chute. Everything that we discuss will also apply to the llama chute. The llama chute um, happens to be a bit longer and taller, so the features are the same. Uh, the first thing is that the chute is portable. It has two uh, pneumatic wheels that are large, um, and th they go through sand and gravel pretty well. And to take the wheels off, there is a T-bolt that gets removed here. And this can be done by one person. The person that put these in screwed them in too far. That will have to be edited. When uh, installing the wheel, um, the threads just need to be put in a little bit um, because we're not running this down the road as if it were a trail or anything. It just needs to be put in enough to catch so the wheel stays on. So the wheel gets removed. So once the wheels are removed, they can be set aside so that they're out of the way of the process. I'll note at this point that the chute should be placed on firm level ground. Firm ground so that um, it has a stable surface to work on and level so that the chute and the animal potentially aren't tipped in any way. The chute is great for a lot of procedures, uh, toenail trimming being one of them. Uh, veterinary work such as ultrasounds or spec exams. It makes toenail trimming a one-person job. And I think in another video that we have on our website it shows uh, some of that action, toenail trimming by one person. So the features of the chute are um, uh, such that the, the animal is going to be restrained very safely for the alpaca or llama and the breeder. So the animal is walked in and there are belly straps to hold the alpaca up if they decide to go down and I find that um, the, uh, the more submissive females will go down more often. We also have a wither strap and this is a strap that goes over the base of the neck of the alpaca or llama and generally I find the, the dominant female or male um, will need this more because they tend to want to go up. Uh, the neck restraint bars are not to necessarily squeeze the neck, but to keep the shoulders from going forward. So when the animal is in the chute, these are brought to about that point so that uh, they're not going to go forward. The four-way connectors here are connected to the halter um, in such a way that it uh, isolates the head and stabilizes the head. Uh, there's two snaps to go on uh, the chin ring on each side the cheek ring on each side, and then there are two that go to the chin ring below where the halter would be connected. And many of these connectors have what's called a quick release, and this is um, useful in the case of an emergency where the alpaca has to be removed quickly. Instead of having to use a thumb latch and raise, lift weight, unhook, these are a quick collar snap. So they come out very quickly and these are used on all four of the belly straps as well as the, um, the head restraint. The uh, alpaca chutes have a new option and that is to remove a bar here. Uh, the standard is with a bar on both sides and this bar holds the uh, connection for the lower four-way and the neck restraint, the, the uh, wither strap. We now have an option where the bar can be uh, removed or not used and the D-rings installed on the vertical posts. This gives uh, a benefit in particular for drawing blood. Most veterinarians uh, will want to work from the side here, the jugglers on the right, so they will be able to work through here to get that blood drop. Prior, this bar would have been in the way. So once the alpaca is walked in, and the alpaca would be walked in without the uh, belly straps in use, I like to uh, 
drop them onto the ground like so. Especially if you know it's an animal that's likely to go down, um, put the belly straps in first. Walk them over it. Once the alpaca is in, their, their uh, neck would go through here, these get closed up, and then the belly straps can be put in place. If the alpaca or llama goes down, uh, the belly straps can be used to raise the animal. And I'll show you. If the animal is down, belly straps are under, one can use both arms to raise the animal. By pulling down on this with one arm, and there is a, a triangular web of fabric here on the belly strap, and by pulling up on that simultaneously, one can use both arms. If you're working with two people, uh, each of you can do it simultaneously, or if you're one person, just go from side to side, raising them as you go, also using the rear straps. So once the uh, animal is safely restrained, uh, we can do things like toenail trimming, which would be here, the front foot, would come out this way with the door open, and I like to do the rear feet out of the rear of the chute, pulling the foot back. I like to extend the leg so that there is no punch left. Once the leg is extended, they can't kick any further, so by bringing the leg out, let them find their balance the toenails can be easily trimmed here. If uh, the veterinarian or yourself are doing uh, ultrasounds transabdominally, the top door opens nicely, doing a right side transabdominal here. If it's a rectal ultrasound, the veterinarian would be working through the rear here using a, a rectal probe or a speculum exam. Um, the veterinarian would have the speculum in and be able to use their light or whatever light source to be able to observe the cervix this way. Um, for doing teeth, uh, this works great for doing teeth. The one thing I'll note, if one is doing teeth, the halter, the nose band on the halter, needs to be oversized so that the mouth can open properly. And I like to put a, uh, a dog chew toy in the back of the mouth, dog chew toy that we sell by the way. Um, so that the mouth is open, so there's no risk of uh, the alpaca llama biting down. The nose ring is large, and then you have the mouth right here to work on, um, trimming teeth in whatever way you choose, either with uh, OB wire that we sell or the toothomatic we also sell. So anything wor working on the head is easily done here. We've had to treat some eyes where.